वेलकम टू वीटीयु ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम आई एम डॉक्टर प्रकाश के आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टुडे अबाउट ड्राइविंग एलिमेंट्स व्हिच आर यूज्ड इन द न्यूमेटिक्स एरिया इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एयर एंड एयर क्वालिटी रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंड प्रिपरेशंस ऑफ एयर टुडे इन टुडेस टॉपिक आई विल बी कवरिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एक्चुएटर्स व्हिच आर अवेलेबल Uh, in the market and uh, how the industry uses these actuators in different application areas as i said uh, today we will talk about driving elements uh, normally the driving elements means for a human if legs and hands are not there we can't do anything suppose we have uh, uh, given with energy but uh, the energy cannot be transferred so we can't do we, if you want to take a cup of coffee and uh, put it in an another place so your hand has to work uh, like that so in the pneumatics also so we have uh, a, a device called driving element that is mainly actuators so without the actuator your work cannot be done so no work can be done on the system so uh, driving elements are actuators and uh, which is used to perform the task of exerting the required force at the end of the stroke are used to create a displacement by the moment of the piston so by moving a piston in the cylinders or in the actuator uh, thing we are trying to execute a motion so uh, that is putting a force required force on the element so Uh, pneumatic actuators can be classified as single acting cylinders conventional spring loaded uh, uh, piston or diaphragm type of things double acting cylinders and linear or rotary actuators so uh, rotary is normally to an angular uh, moment and linear is for a, a, a moment through a, a line okay in this slide i have showed uh, different cylinders which are normally available so uh, the and their symbols respective symbols are shown here single acting cylinder so in which you can find a spring inside the piston and air enters at this point so you can see a, a small uh, line shown here so air goes from here and pushes the complete piston and spring assembly and the piston will move forward when you stop the supply due to the spring force it will return back so uh, here the return force is through the spring so such type of cylinders are referred to as single acting cylinders now the second one is double acting cylinder in the double double acting cylinder there are two supply so you can find two lines shown here on either side of the actuator cylinder shown here so this is the piston piston rod and uh, these are the lines which are shown on the either side so now uh, no spring is inside so you are passing the air higher pressure air from this side and this side air you are venting it so uh, due to which higher pressure air pushes the cylinder forward and this side air vents and allows the motion to execute a forward motion so suppose if you reverse this so air pressure higher pressure will enter this at the time this will be connected to our one side so from here you pass a higher pressure and the piston will start moving retract in the uh, reverse direction so you can change as per your requirement using the directional control valves which we use in the uh, pneumatics that i will uh, discuss in the later part and the third type of cylinders which are used is you can find uh, single rods in these two here also single rod and here also single rod but here you can see a rod on either side means on both the sides of this piston you can find a rod and the rod also has the same diameters the reason here is in some application 
you want the forward stroke and the reverse stroke speeds are to be same. In such cases, we can use a double rodded pistons and which can give you uh, a, a required conditions of uh, same speed strokes for you. So, uh, in both in forward and retroactive directions. So, uh, the next type of cylinder is again a double acting, but here we have shown a symbol, small symbol you can see it here. So, that shows uh, a cushion is given. What is a cushioning? The cushioning is uh, something like this, when I want to move my hand fast, so I will slow down myself when it comes very close to the board. So that means when we reach the end, so we need to make ourselves slow. For that reason, even in the pneumatics, we choose an option called cushioning. So if the cushioning is given, then we show with this symbol. So in the second, uh, 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 below that I have shown a same, but with an arrow mark. So what is this arrow mark refers here is, the cushioning can be adjustable. So what is the advantage of uh, adjustment? You will have a small screw, you uh, turn the screw up or down uh, to make your cushioning uh, better or reduce the cushion effects at the ends. So if you reduce the cushion, uh, it, it moves little fast at the ends also. If you give more cushion, it may it takes a more time, but it goes very gently at that point of time. So whatever the way you can uh, adjust, you can you are you have a freedom to adjust with a kind of screw and uh, a turning knob kinds of arrangements. And in the second cylinder, uh, here we have shown both the sides as a symbol, same symbol. If you observe it here, here also there and here also there. So that shows both end cushioning. So symbolically, when you see the symbol, you can tell what is the type of cylinder that you are buying or that you are using in the application. So the advantages as I told, the cushioning will, uh, will give you a, a, a gentle moments at the ends of the strokes and uh, this will give a same speed some forward and retraction. Uh, so the way you want, you can have some kinds of cylinder actuators available for you. Now let us concentrate what is there in these actuators. If you observe this picture now. If you observe this picture, so every cylinder will have a piston. So this is the piston, the piston part that you can find. In the piston, piston is a larger diameter area which is sealing here the cylinder. The a seal will be placed, a red one. The red one you are finding it here. Na? This is the seal. Seal is placed so that there will be a perfect contact uh, established by the seal between these two elements. So the, there won't be any leakage of air through this. So in that case, uh, we are separating the cylinder in, in terms of chambers. So this side has a one chamber and the other side has an another chamber. If I pass a air here, so air will then apply on this side, blank end of the rod and pushes this cylinder forward. So that is how the motion will happen. It will move forward now. So uh, springs will expand. Now if, if I take out the air supply, this springs will push the back, push back the cylinder to its normal rear end position. So that is how the motion forward and reverse will happen in this case. So this is called as a single acting cylinder. If you observe this, this is a single acting cylinder. So the same theory has been given here. Uh, single acting cylinders are used for applications such as clamping, feeding, sorting, locking, ejecting, break, any applications that we have discussed in the previous section. So you can use these kinds of thing, uh, cylinders. So single acting cylinders are also available 
in different stroke lengths. What is a stroke length? So, uh, capable of moving it to a certain distance. So, that is forward stroke, how much the distance I can move. So, like that, this is called as the stroke of the cylinder. So, maximum length of 80 mm stroke can be achieved using the single acting cylinders. So, the, one of the limitations here is we also have a spring. So, you need to maintain the spring stiffnesses uh, at regular intervals of times. You have to check your springs are having the properties, uh, good properties to meet the requirement. If it becomes, uh, if it is losing its uh, stiffness, then you have to replace the spring. So, little bit of maintenance will be there with uh, this kinds of cylinders. Now, I will move on to double acting cylinder. In double acting cylinders, which are equipped with two working ports, as, uh, as I showed you, so in the previous uh, slides, so here uh, as I showed you, so there are two, two ports. So, two working ports uh, and to achieve a forward motion, compressed air is admitted at the blank end of the cylinder and other side gets connected to the wet. So, and if you want to reverse, uh, that port will be sent with the pressure and this side will be connected to wind. So, you can forward and retract by changing the uh, air flow, pressurized air flow to the different ports of the cylinders. Okay? So, this is how we change the direction. Uh, here in double acting cylinders, which are available in different diameters, why there are requirements of different diameters because as your force requirements are changing, you want to change the diameter. So, depending upon that, you have to select a suitable diameter to meet the force requirement. So, there are two parameters in any selection. One is your force requirement that the, the relatively links to your diameter and the other one is how long you want to move that. That is the stroke, stroke of the cylinder. So, these two are the two things that you have to be careful while selecting. And you can have a diameter from few mm uh, to around 300 mm also in this case. So, and the lens is from few millimeters to a 2 meters also, a long distance. No spring is there. Na? So, definitely there is an option to increase your stroke length. So, this is one of the uh, differences that you can find between single acting and double acting. In double acting cylinders, uh, different constructions are also available. Double acting, double ended with piston rod type, rodless type, tandem type and multi piston type, rotary type. There are different types of uh, double acting cylinders are available in the market. So, now, here I am showing a picture of a double acting cylinder. So, if you see this symbolically which is represented like this. Here you can find this is the piston. Piston. Piston, uh, uh, on the piston you will have a groove and a piston seal which is mounted here, a red element that you can find here. That is the piston seal. And uh, you have one port and the second port. So, now suppose I send the pressurized air through this and I try to vent this out. So, then what happens? The air will enter this side. During that time, uh, you can find that the piston will be at its back end here in this direction. Suppose, if I want to change this I can change this as per the requirement, forward and retraction in its motion in the double acting. Okay. So, now I have also told you there is a possibility of providing a cushion at the ends. So, that is end position cushioning. 
normally pneumatic cylinders operates at a much higher speed as i told you compared to hydraulics so the pneumatics acts much faster so for that reason when you are moving faster it can create a noise at the ends and it can have a, a, a hitting at the ends it won't hit actually but as it moves it makes a hitting noise and also the sudden compression of air can uh, have a kind of uh, inaccuracy developed over a period of time to reduce that we do a end position cushioning and the speeds then uh, due to this there is a tendency of the piston to ram against the end covers okay uh, to avoid this we provide the end cushioning so to avoid or to avoid the damage due to this Uh, speedy action at the ends of the strokes so we provide the cushion so that makes uh, during the ends the cylinder will go slow all double acting cylinders uh, excepting small sizes will be provided with end position cushionings so this is the common thing that has been adopted above certain diameter size today so this arrangement deaccelerates the piston motion at the ends and it helps you to go slow and reduce the damage now let me tell you how the cushioning can be made if you observe this area now if you observe this area so you can find some some construction which is made so as the piston enters a certain area this uh, enters here so uh, it it enters here there is a small amount of you can find a screw here so you can set this screw a small amount of air comes from here to the this side so that means this side so now what is happening the piston is moving back but the air is slightly acting from this side so it gives a cushioning effect to the moving cylinder so it moves little slower so when it enters this area from here the piston will starts move slow so this we call it as a end cushioning that is what we are allowing the small amount of air to the other side to give a back pressure to the motion so hence the cushioning can be made for the cylinder the same thing can be provided on either side here on this side and this side so depending upon the requirement single side can be given or both ends can be cushioned so this is how the end cushioning will work now we will move on to a tandem type of cylinders in tandem cylinders uh, it is essentially a combination of two or more cylinders okay in tandem okay in series in tandem such that the force derived from the first cylinder supplements the force obtained by the second cylinder so this is the thing so okay so you are taking the first cylinder and uh, sending that to the second cylinder so uh, you are supplementing it you are uh, helping it to improvise their flow and pressures so tandem cylinders is a uh, 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 now uh, the force produced by the tandem cylinders now is uh, a twice so now if you if you take this now here you can find it cylinder is as twice as that of the common conventional double acting cylinders so that that is nothing but you are adding in two cylinder strength in single device so that is what you can do do it here and this type of cylinder is used where more force is to be generated where more force is to be generated so this is the requirement so this is the requirement okay so uh, now how the tandem cylinders looks if you observe this figure now you can find uh, dark uh, blue you can find it here one port here 
in the another port here and the other two is with this color. So there are uh, two input ports and two other ports, two ports. Simultaneously you can send the air from one to the other. Okay, so that you can amplify the force and uh, give a uh, strength uh, to the air in a single device. So that is the advantage of the tandem cylinders. Tandem cylinders are normally used in uh, automotive applications also in uh, braking and other areas tandem cylinders are used. Your uh, brake pedal and then uh, a tandem master cylinder will be there that in turn supplies the air to the wheels of the uh, vehicle. Okay. So, uh, other type of uh, cylinders are rodless cylinders. So, in the rodless cylinders, the advantage of the rodless cylinder is as there is a no rod, uh, it can be, it can have a longer stroke. So, because if rod is there, due to the self weight of the rod, there can be a bending of the rods and over a period of time, uh, the function of the cylinder may be uh, a difficulty or jamming, uh, jam of cylinders will occur. So, those things uh, are the difficulties in a long stroked uh, uh, rod types of cylinders. But if you eliminate the rod, so your stroke length can be increased. So, the advantage of rods less cylinders are the long stroke lengths. So, different operational principles and uh, uh, based on the construction type, we can classify this. So, we can call them as one of the type as band or cable cylinders and the second one as uh, ceiling band cylinders with isolated cylinder bar barrels and third one as cylinder with magnetically coupled strokes. So, there are uh, three types of rodless cylinders which you can have it in the market. So, rodless cylinders are bit costly compared to conventional rod type of cylinders. But if you want to have a long strokes and a kind of long life and long stroke, you can prefer in certain applications. Rodless cylinders have the following advantages available in long length, see this word available in long length, up to 4 meter or even higher you can have, okay, uh, as no buckling is there you can increase the stroke length. Most ideally suited for stopping and fixing robotic uh, uh, applications basically. So, occupies a less space as the extension of piston rod is not present. Even if you move, uh, rod is not there. If the rod is there, it will move ahead that much distance. So, if no rod is there, so you can see that the length of that uh, uh, rod uh, rod length is now shortened. So, uh, your moment will be less because extending rod will not be there. In the rodless uh, type, more widely used is magnetic coupling type of things. So, how the magnetic coupling type of rodless cylinders works is, you have a coils like this. These are the different coils which are being energized electrically and as you energize alternatively, which will uh, uh, move this uh, rod element within this, you can find it here. So, as you energize, you must have observed, uh, magnetically you can elevate and move. Uh, uh, in uh, magnetic elevated trains, you can find the applications or in a linear slide actuators, also you can find this. Uh, uh, beds which are moving magnetically uh, forward and other things now which are being uh, coming up now in the recent days. In all of which we use a, 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 an electrical energy and that produces a magnetic force which in turn move this uh, uh, load ahead and takes forward. So, alternatively we are doing that and as we do it your uh, sleeve will move inside and you can move forward and reverse based on that way. Uh, other type is mechanically coupled rodless cylinder. Here 
we have a mechanically two rods like this one is idler and the other one is a, a main assembly rod so uh, the cylinder barrel is provided with a slot across the entire length and the force is transmitted through a slide permanently connected to the piston and the connection from the pistons to slide is directed outwards through the slot cylinder barrels in this case and the slot is sealed by means of sealing band which seals the inside of the slot so we are creating a slot in which as you move rotate this something will move in the guided slot path so that's how you can move over a certain distance uh, long distance compared to rod rod types so far we have discussed uh, linear actuators so now in the application we also have a rotary motions for example you consider now overhead valves are there so you want to open and close those valves so you have to have a angular motion in case of angular motion we cannot use the conventional linear type of cylinders we have to use a rotary actuators in the rotary actuators again we have a different configurations so the configurations are uh, you can turn by 180 degree you can turn by 270 degree different degrees of rotation based on that we can say some of the rotary actuators are available and if you take the construction type we can have a vane type of construction vane type of construction and rack and pinion type of construction so as you know if i say vane type i have already uh, told you what is a vane a rotary element is there as slots are there and when you rotate the rotary element the blades will move uh, uh, outward due to the eccentric Uh, send uh, external forces that are acting on it as you rotate so uh, uh, that is the your vein type of thing whereas in case of rack and pinion type a rack is there and a pinion is there when you rotate the pinion the rack can move linear so rotary to linear motion can be obtained using the rack and pinion type of arrangements so uh both the types here you can get a different degree like 180 270 degree rotation here in rack uh, you can use use for angle or rotations up to 360 degree any rotation and the torque uh, up to 100 to 150 newton meter can be uh, taken in this slide i have shown some of the types of vane type of uh, rotary actuators if i say vane type of rotary actuator you, uh, actuator you can see the vane inside the cut section of the uh, actuator as shown here the red element is a uh, blade okay that you can see there so as you rotate there is a stopper at one place so it can move up to the stopper so that means you can move by that angle where you have given a stopper so this is how the rotary actuator will work and uh, rack and pinion type of uh, cylinders if you consider this is the element observe this this is your uh, pinion and uh, this is your rack okay rack so as you rotate this this starts moving and fro so this is how you can move uh, a rotary to linear actions can be made so far we have discussed different types of actuators which are available so starting from single acting cylinder double acting cylinder double acting with a double rodded on rod on both sides with same rod diameters and then we have moved on to uh, cushion type in the cushion type we have moved to cushionless single side cushion double side cushion cylinders and then further we have moved to a rodless type of cylinders 
in the rod less uh, we have discussed about magnetically operated type and mechanically operated type of rod less cylinders and now i am moving on to the element important element which is used on the piston so to seal the uh, actuators so to give a perfect sealing while the actuator is moving so uh, these are the sealing elements which are used in the cylinders as cylinder seals of course when i say seal so uh, in my experience i have seen a seals which can cost around 5 to 10 rupees but a seal which can cost around 50 60000 also so whereas in uh, in the areas like uh, thermic uh, fluids are being used phosphating lines are being used there we also use a sealing element which are heavily costly so uh, in the pneumatic it, it is not like that uh, uh, affordable cost uh, sealing elements are available here so in the sealing elements we have a cup seal type of uh, seals and double cup type here you can see you can see double cup this side and this side both so double cup type of seal we call this as a double cup type of seals so you can use either a single cup or a double cup depending upon your requirement sometimes if the pressures are high so you can go for the double cup type that depends upon the application and what is the forces that you are acting uh, working uh, those things has to be considered normally normally suppose if you take this seals you can take what are the materials which are used so you can see it here sealing materials are perbonan vitan teflon these are the materials which are used in pneumatic uh, seals okay so uh, these uh, materials are being used they are uh, cushioning uh, rubber type of uh, elements which can give a better cushioning and as well as a sealing properties okay so this is the uh, overall about the piston seals now we have discussed many types of cylinders but anything is there a cylinder when you want to work using the cylinder the cylinders are to be fixed first suppose i want to push uh, a load i want to push a load i should stand firmly on the ground and then push if i am not standing perfectly and trying to push so uh, i can't move, make any motion i can't give any motion to the load so ultimately to make the load to move so we have to have a uh, fix ourselves so in certain manner method so that the things are being executed moving at an angle moving straight so when we want to move straight we will stand it in some direction when we want to move in uh, an, an angle we have to stand in some direction so like that we as a human being we have a servo mechanism given by the god so which tells us how do how we should stand how we should stand to move this load from here to here automatically my mind will calculate that and go and stand in that direction and do that activity but the same thing has to be mimicked by us in the application side so that get an accurate motion as per the requirement for example before i take uh, elaborate on this slide i want to tell you an example suppose you are uh, working on a Uh, uh bus doors two door systems of the bus so uh, you, you you have traveled in uh, bmtc buses so when the pneumatic cylinders actuates the door opens and closes you can move up and down the stairs and come down or go up into the bus or out of the bus so this opening and door closing is done pneumatically so uh, but if you observe how they have fixed the cylinders in the two door condition there are differences there are differences in the conventional volvo the fixing is different and in the earlier type of two door system the fixing types are different so there are different mechanisms or the different fixing methods are to be adopted 
in order to achieve the motion without bending the doors, without giving a large unwanted forces on the system. So that is an important factor here. So many of the times the for the industries we take how do we fix a different requirements. So this becomes a one day sessions for the industries. So because they come across with many type of application wherein they want to handle and move their loads according to the requirements. So now let me take one by one what are the different types of uh, cylinder mountings are there. Foot mounting, if you observe here there is a, a base type of thing which is flat and which fixes and there can be a screw and bolted here. So your uh, cylinder is firmly fixed and it can move like this. And the second type here shown here is a flange type. Here this is the flange, red one you are seeing. So this one, this one you are seeing, this is the flange. So in the front you can see a flange fit. So this flange will have a holes and you can fix using those holes bolts and nuts. Okay, so this is a flange mounting. And the third type is a swivel flange in the front side. So this is in the front side, swivel flange. So it can swivel, okay, swivel flange type. In the second, uh, last one, we have shown flange, uh, swivel flange rail here. You can see the red thing is at the back here. It is at the front, it is at the back. So normally in uh, uh, BMTC's buses you can find this swivel flange in rear conditions which are fitted at the, uh, uh, the first row where the first seat will come just after you come up the stairs. So uh, from there your cylinder will actuate to push the door, okay. So uh, uh, threaded cylinders here you can see a extension and the threading provided so that it, it gets turned onto the uh, bed itself and screwed uh, on the bed, okay. So a firm fitting, one of the method in the machine tools that we use in many places. And rear flange type, you can see a flange at the rear and uh, swivel flange centers, at the center you can find a swelling flange. So, depending upon the requirement and the different conditional requirement, we have to mount the cylinders in proper uh, one of the type, okay. So then it will become easy for you to take that particular motion. Now I will be uh, uh, moving on to my next session. Here we will be discussing about different types of control valves, different types of control valves. So uh, they are the heart of the any systems, control valves are the heart of the system. Suppose if uh, uh, for a human if the heart failure occurs, he has died, dead, correct? Na? So in the same sense, so if the control valves does not work, so uh, system cannot work. So very, very important element of any uh, system. Okay, so directional control valves which are mainly used to change the direction of the fluid. So that means you are moving forward and you want to reverse it. So I have to change the air flow from here to here. So reversing the air flow from port A to port B, port B to port A like that can be done using a certain set of uh, manually operated, mechanically operated or electrically operated directional control valves. So uh, that is uh, a very, very important uh, element, okay. So now in the directional control valves, again if you consider a directional control valves, we find a, a different uh, uh, number of uh, uh, types of valves. The, we can classify that uh, directional control as based on their number of ports on the valves number of switching positions. Suppose if I have to tell what is a port, port is a passage or a hole through which the air travels, okay. Position means 
it, it is represented as boxes, I will explain that. So, it allows one configurational uh, motion or a set of action achieved with one moment. Okay? So, this we call it as a position. So, now for example, I am in, I am standing here. If I move it, another position. So, I can move forward, I can move reverse like that. So, different positions. So, different functions are rep represented as positions. So, if machine has two functions, one is moving up and the another one is moving down. So, I need a two position. So, depending upon the functional requirement, based on the uh, machine requirement, we have to choose the positional requirement. So, one is port and the another one is position. Now, also the classification of valves can be made on method of actuation. Method of actuation means I can actuate the valve using manually or mechanically using rollers or uh, wedge type of mechanisms, cam and roller type of mechanisms, all those things mechanically or electrically using solenoid valves at the ends of the valves. So, uh, if you want to move further ahead, electronically you can move. So, there are different methods of actuation from manual to uh, highly precise electronic control. Okay? Now, uh, depending upon the method of actuation we have discussed, method of reset. So, how do we reset the positions? So, based on that also there can be a classification, reset method. So, design and constructional features based on that we can again, the directional walls can be classified. So, this is the different ways of classifying a wall. Now, in this slide, I will discuss about symbolically how these walls are represented. Because before you move on to any application in an industry or in your labs, okay, you should understand uh, which wall you are using. How do you recognize that? The recognition is on the wall, there is a plate uh, and a symbol uh, pressed or the stickered on that plate. So, that based looking at the symbol, I can understand, yes, this is this valve. So, now uh, a symbol being the most important thing before we do conduct any of the experiment. So, I am uh, uh, taking this as a very important slide and 2 by 2, so that is 2 ports, number of ports is 2. How do we say the number of ports is 2? Just observe here 1 and 2. There are 2 ports in it. And number of position, again we have said 2. How do we say this is 2 position? This box, the one box, this box is 1 and the other box is this. There are 2 boxes, that is 2 position. So, in total, the specification of this valve, the specification of this valve is the specification of this valve is 2 by 2 way directional control valve. I can say this one, spec of this one. Okay? Now, if you consider the next one, 3 by 2. Now, here the uh, port is changing from 2 to 3. If you observe this and this, it is changing from 2 to 3. How? 1, 2 and 3. So, this is a 3 is an exhaust port. Okay? So, 3 is an exhaust port. So, there are 3 ports in one position, one box. So, that is why we call this as 3, 2 position. This is one position and this is second position. In the position here, the uh, this is closed here, means normally closed. We can also say normally open type, normally closed type, depending upon how the connections uh, are shown here. This is important here. Okay, this is important here. Okay, in the next thing, if I if I show here, here, three by two, normally open. Observe this. It is normally open. This is normally closed. Normally closed means here it is closed. Normally open means 
it is open like this in its normal condition. So what is the difference sir? If you ask what is the difference sir? As soon as the air is connected to this port, the air will travel to the actuator side. Here it will not happen like that. Even if air is there, air will not go beyond this point. So if you want to pass the air, then you have to actuate to the other position, like that. So uh, based on that, we can uh, know the specs of the valves, okay, and automatically you should select the appropriate valve for an appropriate number of function that you want. So uh, however, the position of the valve which is available is maximum uh, allowed is three position position not port ok. So whereas port you have up to 5 port in the pneumatics ok. So 5 by 2 way, 5 by 3 way so like that you can have a different types of valves which are available. So uh, 4 by 2 way as I said there are 4 ports 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 position, 5 by 2 way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 po ports in the 1 position, one of the box. So 5 by 2, 2 position valve. Here, if you observe this, there is a small change here. The change is in the center. So we have added one more position. So what is this now? So there were 2 boxes here. Here 1, 2, 3. There are 3 boxes. In the center, all of these are closed that is center blocked. So we have closed the center, closed center type of thing. Directional, directional control valve with mid position closed. So when we have to use these kinds of valves, suppose you are using a, a piston or a, a, a kind of a press. So you are moving up and down. If we de-energize the valve at any point of time, uh, if I de-energize this side and this side, the valve will come to this position. At that point of time, the uh, press should not come down. It should block. It should get arrest wherever it is traveling. It should not move down due to gravi gravitational load and its own load. Okay? So, it should not pull down fast. So, uh, to avoid that, at this point, we can lock it. So no air flows anywhere, na? either to the atmosphere it can't flow, no air can enter. So whatever there is locked. So the piston also stops at the middle without uh, allowing for any damage by hitting the uh, fixture sides. So this is a very, very important. Here middle stop is available. Here middle stop cannot be made. So forward retraction, if I take out this at the middle, it can stop in the middle. Here only I can move two position. One is forward and retraction. So depending upon the number of position, I can say this is how my function can happen. So with this, now uh, I have told you about uh, different symbols and the importance of this port and positions and how it relates to functions uh, required in the machine side. So now, uh, I will be starting my next session uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, some examples along with these kinds of valves.